Ladies and gentlemen, this is a special report by Janet Jensen, mother of the intrepid reporter Aaron Jensen. Aaron Jensen is beginning her day in Washington, D.C. in the Keybridge Marriott Hotel. What are you going to, going to be taking a tour in Wa of Washington, D.C. The White House is the executive mansion is used by the President and First Lady as their residence and living quarters. Coming up on the left, the Islamic Center for Washington, D.C., known as the mosque, construction of the between 1949 and 1957. Also, here on the left, coming up, blue white flag, the Embassy of Bailey, on your right with the office in front of the Embassy of Bailey, back to your left with the red flag, the Embassy of Turkey, coming up on the right side, the white building in the Golden Center, below the door, the Embassy of Japan, back to your left with the red flag, the flag in front of the Middle East, the Embassy of Lesotho, the Mexican love country in South Africa. And here on your right side, the white fence, this is where the Japanese ambassador's residence is located. going to take one picture all the way down the flag over there. and say right oh, over there the we saw where President Woodward Row Wilson was buried. Right walk over, over there, this way. Woodward Wilson was buried with Ellie. <laughs> Through this hall is where he was buried. I will send you some of the pictures. When she does that, will you send them to me? This is the National Cathedral.
it also marks the center of the capital. And right below this is where George Washington was supposed to be buried, and he's not because he agreed. Congress asked him if he wanted to be buried down there, and he agreed. And when he died, they asked his wife, and she agreed if she could be buried beside him, which Congress okayed. And then when they were both deceased, Congress didn't really act that quickly. And when they went to recover their bodies, his will stated that he wanted to be buried in Mount Vernon, down in Virginia. So he's buried in his home in Mount Vernon. Yeah, so there's just an empty area. So it's a good lot in the middle, so I recommend it. It's, it's not a four leaf clover or anything. And you can feel how dignity it is from everybody stepping in it. There you go. <laughs> That was being torn down and they didn't know what to do with it because obviously they don't destroy something like that. So they sold it to the government for $1,500. So the running joke is it's the best investment the government ever made. <laughs> yeah. so it's called the Hall of Columns, named for the 28 white marble columns right here. And you'll notice the statues. Congress passed a resolution where each state was able to submit two statues to the Capitol building, and they had to be either bronze or marble, and the person who picked it had to be deceased. And I'll show you one of Washington's. Both of Washington states are missionaries, Mother Joseph and Martha Swimmin. I'll show you Mother Joseph.
our last day in Washington, D.C. with Ellie. And it is a blizzard outside. And we might have a snowball fight. Oh, and we're going to Williamsburg and we're going to get a tour of the White House with
We're standing in the galley with Ellie. Turn around and say. Of the what's the name of the ship? I don't know. The Susan Constant. Now there are no women on the ship. There are only men. All men. So they do boy things, Aaron. Now do you see a bathroom down here? No, that was the boy thing I was thinking that <laughs> they would be doing. That's right. There's no bathroom. They have to use a chamber pot or a potty <laughs> uh, of things for their clothes. That wool, wool, and then uh, linen. They did a lot of linen made out of flax. And this is a flax uh, cassock. Uh, I wish it was a wool cassock, but it's not. Yeah. A reminder that it is a fort. Inside one of the barracks at Jamestown Fort. Very heavy. Excuse me. Put your head in there and your back and your chest are taken care of. And these seem to be very short people. Tool shed. Drying room. Powder room. Washington and all the army guys won the Revolutionary War. The British guys were out there. Center in Colonial Williamsburg. With? Huh? With? Ellie. <laughs> <laughs>
a wondrous time. Okay, here now, go by the sign. They're making chairs. Of not running a free press at the mm. Stamp Act. Now, as the politics gets more contentious, it's very difficult for you to be on the fence. In fact, if you've ever sat on a picket fence, huh. it hurts. Um, was this about the way the lighting was? Well, it's certainly the way the lighting is. So I'm going to poke a hole with an awl like I'm doing right now, insert the thread through that hole, make the stitch, repeat until done. And how many times have you poked through your thumb instead of the I pattern? wished you wouldn't have asked that. <laughs> You've cursed me. Now. I beg your pardon. I have an option now. I can either stop sewing for the rest of the day, <laughs> and this gentleman won't get his boot anytime soon. What they would do if people were bad. Their necks in the hole. Yes. Would you like to have your neck in the hole? Yeah. Would you like to have your mommy's necks in the hole? Yeah. Okay. I mean, just for a picture. <laughs>
nothing at all. And he goes around saying that's his land. Okay. And you don't. No. It's. Can you guess? Wait. No. Take a closer look. Matt Cat, I've got samples on the table right up here. Those are some of the types of hairs, Jack's hair, Marsha's hair. So if you ladies have come for seeking wigs, tell me what type of hair you favor. Tell me what style. Would we like to have wigs for daytime use or would we just use them at night? Well, I would say if you want to be fashionable, you need dress wigs, you need travel wigs, you need day wigs. All the wigs are the white wigs, your natural colors for day, and your greys. That's your professionals. What she realized, is it not the same where you're from? We've just known you, it's simply top of the fashion. Yes. And so you've understand. got to have a number of wigs in different styles and different colours. Ladies as well as gentlemen. Now if you've been working sort like I, then you just simply sweep your long locks up like what I have, but it is not proper English fashion for us to wear a gown. That's a state of undress. That's what savages and heathens do. And now can you read? Because I've got styles posted back up on the back wall. And you can see all the time. It is never a fact. Oh my word, madam. My dear, you must have, your father must have thought highly of you to, to be able to instruct you in the arts and mysteries of, of being able to read and write and all of that, indeed. Well, I'm just dressing this man's wig. He has a contract. He's brought his wig back in here to have it freshened up. And it is human hair. He does shave his head bald. But you could just dress your own hair. I've got curling iron track here and I can heat those up. I've got a tub out back. If any of you brought me, did you bring me your wigs and hair pieces from last visit? Are they dirty? You, you can drop them off in the tub back then I can launder it for you. If that's what you want. I'm also your barberess, your hairdresser, and most importantly, I'm your fashion advisor. <laughs> that's barely, that's I. Now, ladies, <laughs> your hair is down. Have you not had a chance to have it dressed this morning? I shall be most obliged to sweep it up for you because you don't want to walk about here, not in English society, with your hair down. That is a state of undress. That's what savages and heathens do. Maybe if you're not no savage or heathen, this is high fashion for ladies. And in order to achieve that warfare, if it's to be your own hair and not a wig, I would wager that you need hair to the back of your knees. And then I'm going to have to sweep it up and add numerous attachments, matching it up to your hair colour. Can you come back within the next half hour? I shall spend the next nine hours slaving on your head, adding as much as a pound of attachments in order to achieve this fashion. Would that feel good? No, especially on a hot summer day. Or I can sit you down, sweetheart. If you, this is what your father wishes, being the head of the household, he does speak for you. Uh, then if he wishes for me to shave your head bald, I shall. Tell me the, tell me the rich young ladies be wearing wigs and having their head shaven proper not. Not women like I work in sort, you see. I just sweep my long locks up. Uh, if I have it dressed, then I don't have to cover it. But if it is dressed, then you can wear it like that, not cover it. But since my hair is just not dressed, I've got to keep it. Do any of your friends have their heads shaved bald? No. No. Maybe we won't do that today then. Aww. What is your. I apologize. Is she your daughter, sir? She is her daughter. I see. Well, Is your husband alive? No, he is not. I say, because if your husband is alive, then it is his Actually, wishes. Actually, he... I am a divorced woman. I see. So, film soul, you say? Yes. Film soul, meaning that you support yourself. And yes. All. Well, indeed, then you, then you speak for then her. Then I can speak. Then you for can her. speak for her, indeed. Now, the film soul means that you either be the, not married, or perhaps your husband's passed on, or something of that nature. Mm -hmm. and then you are the one that I'm in charge. But if you should marry, then it just once again falls upon your husband. Mm -hmm. They say what they can and can't do. <laughs> You'll notice a number of widows here in, mm -hmm. in Williamsburg, Mum. Many of you do not choose to remarry, I say that straight away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. Now, have you flee out the back door when you leave? And oh, take you right around the front. Oh, have you got the front door? You ruin my reputation. Oh. <laughs> That's the truth of it.
Jeffrey's ready. Are you ready? Yeah. So we can see the other side of the shell. The youngster who was free of his apprenticeship, his master got sick. He didn't have it. He didn't, wasn't well enough to, to work at his trade and teach the boy. He said, here, you might as well go home. I can't teach it. So you're free of your tutorial, please, and get Today we're in... Williamsburg. Yes, Williamsburg, Virginia. And this is the foundry. That's where they, it's like a silversmith. same items being made locally. There's a big difference between the cost. So it's cheaper to buy imported goods than it is to buy locally made goods. So how goods. do these people stay in business? Probably enormous amounts of repair work. You know, we talk about all these different things that they made, and the Gettys could have made th these different items that they advertise, the guns, the tomahawks, the swords, the knives, um, plates, candlesticks. But what they probably were doing was when people would go across the street and buy something that had come from England, rather than ship it back across the sea to have it repaired when it broke, you have it repaired locally. So these guys are doing enormous amounts of repair work, and they probably did munitions work during the war. Um, they had already advertised they were gunsmiths and cutlers, so they very easily um, could have geared up doing that type of work. Now, during the war, then, the work there would have increased because they would be bringing imports Yes and no. Yeah, um, there's a couple different things going on. One, the stores are already still filled with goods from Great Britain. There are certain items that are ignoring demand because people have signed non-importation agreements and have agreed not to bring these things into their stores. But there are many, many items for sale and readily available in the stores. Now, as far as these guys' work increasing, in general, when you talk about a war, people tend not to buy luxury goods or as many luxury goods. So I don't think... You know, people are running out and buying a lot of beautiful silver things as far as the silver work they did, but they might be having repair work done. They might be melting things down, um, getting money for scrap metal. That's where he got his metal initially. So this metal is called pewter, this kind of silvery looking metal, and pewter is a mix of metals. It mainly has tin in it, but sometimes it had copper or antimony or bismuth or lead. And over in England, not here, they would take and mix it all up in a pot and stir it up, and they would make this metal called pewter, and that's an alloy. And then they would sell things to the colonists that lived here. And I'll just show you, if something were to happen and your spoon were to get bent up like that, you could sell that then as scrap metal. So you probably wouldn't take good things and melt it back down, but when something was broken and couldn't be repaired, you could make something else with that metal. And you stay right where you are because you guys are in a good spot to see. And I'll take my liquid metal and it's hot, hot, hot. I'll pour it into the mold. I'll have a temperature gauge. This is about 600 degrees. Hot, hot, hot. And I'm watching for the top. As a matter of fact, I'll let you guys watch with me. You stay where you are. You're in a good spot. But you need to sort of jiggly a little bit. We're going to watch for it to stop jiggling, and then we're going to see the color change exactly what's happening now. Yeah, exactly. Lighter, yeah. And see, it sort of it shrunk just a teeny tiny bit. Whenever metal cools, it contracts, 
shrinks just a little bit. So I want the shrink to be right up in this little screw so it doesn't mess up my bowl. And then what kind of tool am I going to use to get rid of this right here? File? I could use a file, but there's another tool that might be a little faster. You might have to be thinking of it. So, yeah, I could use, if I used a hammer, I could use a hammer and a chisel and sort of hit the chisel with a hammer pop it off. You know what? Sometimes I accidentally <laughs> drop it in there and it melts the whole spoon. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, I'll never forget one. He's making a candlestick. I don't know if you guys saw them when you came it. in. See the real shiny ones in the corner? Far left hand side, right on this display case? He's making one like that. The second one, the first one that's kind of red is bronze. And then the next one is brass, that more yellow metal. And that's what he's making. 